um, our, our new webinar. And uh, this is going to be a session about eligibility for waivers. Um, my name is Kara. Let me change, I should change my name here. Um, Kara Thrasher Livingston. Um, and I am with the Senior Disability Services Training Unit. And uh, perhaps our other training unit and SDS staff can also jump in and state your name and say hello. Hi, my name's Delight Mells and I'm a training specialist with SDS. And I'm in the background today admitting folks and monitoring the chat. So I'm here helping support Kara walk you through eligibility. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so excited that you're all here. My name is Anna Williams. I also work for Senior Disability Services and I work with the Living Well Grant. And I'm Kat Sawalapinskis and I am Care Coordination Support Person and I see some Care Coordinators here. Um, and I am also with SDS. Thank awesome. <clears throat> Thank you, team. So today we're going to go through a short PowerPoint about eligibility, um, just sticking with that particular topic. And uh, then we'll, we'll, I'll be doing some recording during that time, just so folks are aware that the session is recorded. And then when we're done with the presentation part, we would be so honored and happy to answer your questions about eligibility, or if you have other questions, um, that, that's fine too. Uh, we'll have these sessions periodically, uh, once per quarter, and a couple other trainings that are different topics for, uh, for um, individuals and families. <clears throat> I'm happy to, the question came in, is the PowerPoint available any place? I am happy to email you a copy of that. Um, if my team can help me make sure that we uh, keep a record of emails by which people joined, then we can go ahead and do that. The Zoom format is is uh, needs us to take care of that type of thing, but but yeah, we'd be happy to do that for you, no problem. Okay, thank you uh, again for joining, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Oh Lord, what happened here? Okay, so we are going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the home and community-based waiver. And I'm gonna go ahead and just work with it this way so I can remind myself that we have uh, only eight slides on this topic. Um, feel free to chat in questions as we go. Uh, we'll, we'll be more so interested in answering those after we're done the explanation part here to start out with, <clears throat> but again, this is a presentation just about eligibility for Alaska Medicaid home and community-based waivers. Okay, so the first things first to, to know about this is that um, to get a waiver, to get help with a waiver or a personal care assistant, you need to have Medicaid, okay? So Medicaid is, the um, the entity that that funds these these supports for you, so you would apply for Medicaid with the Division of Public Assistance. Medicaid is essentially health insurance for low income people. It's health insurance, like other kinds of health insurance. Um, people who have a low income uh, can can apply for Medicaid. And if you're an adult and you have Medicaid, it means that your income must be under a certain limit. So your, the money that you make and have in the bank available to you <clears throat> or other ways of having resources that could be financial available to you have to be under a certain limit. And then you, when you apply for Medicaid, that is with the, the Division of Public Assistance. Okay. If there, if you have a child or there, you have a loved one who is a child with a disability, they may qualify under family Medicaid, 
um, Denali Care is what they call it now, uh, or other forms of Medicaid. They also may qualify for Medicaid without the uh, family Medicaid, which has an in income limit and resource limit for the family. So based on the child's disability alone, a child may qualify for Medicaid. Um, Medicaid can pay for medical care, doctor, um, medicine, different medical procedures. It can also pay for hands-on help or other kinds of help for everyday living. If you experience a disability and you need help for daily life. Okay, so a lot of times people think about Medicaid for medical care we're pretty familiar with that. Uh, Medicaid for hands-on help ongoing um, would be for uh, would be people who who have experience a disability of any age may may use Medicaid for that. Okay, so <clears throat> in focusing on eligibility. What, when somebody with a disability needs hands-on help for everyday life, that person might need personal care services, which means that this is somebody who is a hands-on helper, somebody who is paid to help with everyday living tasks. So if I need this kind of help, I would have to have applied for Medicaid and have Medicaid, okay? Uh, to, to, to get personal care services. <clears throat> I would have to have medical records that tell of my disability and my health conditions. That means that I need this kind of help, okay? So what is hands-on help with daily living? This would be hands-on help with things like getting out of bed, bathing, showering, preparing a meal, help to eat the meal, washing dishes, help with going to the toilet, maybe briefs or pull-ups if I use those, and cleaning up, doing laundry, cleaning up rooms that I use at home, or going from room to room. Maybe I need help um, going from place to place within my home. And also getting to places in the neighborhood or my community. I might need help with that. I might need uh, transportation. I might need help with taking medicine and some of my everyday medical needs for care that are part of the conditions that I live with, health-related ones. Um, I might need help with that. And there are certain kinds of help that a, a, a staff person could help me with, limited. Um, different than what a nurse or a doctor would provide, something every day that I might need help with related to my health. Um, when someone living with a disability needs hands-on help with everyday living, that person might, their, their disability might make it so that they need reminders or learning skills for everyday life. <clears throat> the person may need the same kind of help that is given for someone living in a nursing home. The person might need the same kind of help given to people with a developmental disability who live in a, a care facility. Okay, so these are places where a person would live and they would get a lot of help every day throughout their day, right? And that would be in a, a a place they live that's built for the purpose of, of giving that care. So if a person with a disability needs this kind of help, they may choose um, what, what we call the home and community-based waiver. And that is just a, an option, a choice for people um, who, who need this type of help and they can live in their home and community, um, but receive the same kind of help as given in a facility. Um, not all of the care in, that they give to people who live in 
places like that comes through the waiver. If it's medical care, um, the person's going to get that from a medical provider. Okay, if the person needs the kind of help that you know would would need a skilled professional, like a medical provider or a behavioral health provider or somebody who has to have a license to practice their um, their uh, medical services for people, then that is going to be where the person would get that care. And certain kinds of care happen at home. Much care does happen at home with the waiver option as well. So if I need help like given in a nursing home, it's uh, hands-on help with daily living. Okay, getting help out of bed, maybe into bed, bathing, showering, um, someone to prepare a meal. And I might need help eating the meal. I might get my nutrition in different ways. Um, I might need help with uh, using the toilet. Maybe I need help with uh, briefs or pull-ups, cleaning up. <clears throat> I may need help with laundry. I might need somebody to do my laundry, wash dishes. I might need help going from different rooms to different rooms at home. I might need help getting to places in the neighborhood. Transportation is what that means. Uh, help with taking medicine, everyday medicine that I take just as a regular uh, regular way to help care for myself, living at home with, uh, with my medical needs. Um, I might need help with other kinds of medical needs that, that I have ongoing. Okay, I have a, a, I might need some help with that. I might need a worker to help me with those things. And again, I'm going to have medical records that tell about my disability and my health conditions. Okay, so the, these are, are, so you can understand what the help is and also begin to understand, um, you know, when you, when you think about applying for these kinds of services, you'll have to have medical records and uh, they will tell of your disability, tell of uh, your loved one's disability. So what does needing help like in a developmental disability facility uh, look like? What is that? Yes. So <clears throat> this, this means that a person has a disability that happened before age 22. Okay, so early on, relatively early in life, um, they, they have a disability and a a medical expert who knows about developmental disability, which is just the kind of disability that affects how a person learns and grows and gets skills and can, can do things for him or herself as they grow up. Okay, an expert in this type of disability writes down their diagnosis. And the per this person who has a developmental disability um, may think or act or communicate very different than someone who has the same age who doesn't have a disability. Okay, so there's, there's diagnosis part, but for understanding it, somebody who thinks and acts and communicates very differently than someone who of the same age or thereabouts who doesn't have a disability. <clears throat> the person can do well with custom help to learn and practice everyday life skills and safety skills. So custom help would be like, you know, a loved one would teach that person how to do more for him or herself in the, in the home, in the community. Somebody who knows that person or gets to know that person can be there to, um, 
to tell them how to do different things that they, they want to do, okay? And it can be everyday things, right? Somebody who has a disability like this is going to be, you know, somebody who will, um, will need help with everyday things and everyday decisions. People can always make their own decisions. And uh, it's more about how to interact with your everyday, um, your everyday home environment and maybe in your community, how to communicate, get your needs met, how to tell other people what's on your mind, what you'd like to do every day, that type of thing. So this is what I mean by custom help. Somebody with a disability, uh, uh, with a developmental disability might need lots of reminders to do things um, every day, okay? So I might need a lot of reminders, might need a couple for some things. And then as I become more able to do more for myself, maybe I need less help for certain things, but I will have to, I'll have to have lots of reminders or somebody to do things for me because there might be some things I am not able to do, or maybe I don't understand how to start doing them yet. And so this is a way that a person can learn throughout their whole life if they happen to have a developmental disability. Just like anybody else, they're going to be learning throughout their life and um, learn to do more for yourself each day. Or have someone there to do those things for you until you learn them or do part of those things for you until you learn them. And there might be some things that, uh, that aren't things that you would learn. And that's like life for anybody. There are many things I won't learn to do throughout my life as well. And I'm hoping that my main meaning here is, for, is to understand that this is help for everyday living. Okay, things you do every day. <clears throat> a person who has a developmental disability um, might learn very differently than others who don't have that disability. And will probably need help like this for their whole life. And this is to help us understand more about, we're comparing the, the, the needs of somebody who might need help, like in a developmental disability facility. Well, what does that help look like? Well, it looks like this. So we're back to uh, a medical expert thought here, right? There's a medical expert who is, uh, has the training and education to be able to know about the needs of other people and make a decision about the, the, the condition that they have, which would be a diagnosis. So if I have intellectual developmental disability, and I'm going to apply for the waiver and we're going to talk about, you know, we're going to, today we're talking about eligibility. Our waivers that are, are there to help people with intellectual developmental disability <clears throat> are based on certain diagnoses. Okay, so I'm going to have medical records that say, I have one or maybe more or other disabilities that are from this list. Okay, it has to be at least one from this list for eligibility for our waiver to help people with intellectual developmental disability. So the medical expert writes the diagnosis, autism, cerebral palsy, seizure disorder, intellectual and or developmental disability. You might hear those terms together or sometimes separately. That's okay. Um, or perhaps an other disability. <clears throat> that means the person learns and communicates very differently than someone the same age who does not have a disability. So this is a, a piece of the, the medical 
medical records that I would have. Okay. I want to go back to the slide here. Um, in some cases, a person might experience any of these disabilities and any others that mean that the person, um, you know, has a disability. They have a they have a medical record of that. Um, in in some cases, people who have disabilities <clears throat> do they they won't need the help that a waiver provides. They can provide their own help. Um, it just means that their disability is there, but the way they um, interact or the way I might interact with my world every day, you know, if I, if I don't need to have a person helping me hands-on like that, um, I'm probably not going to want the waiver. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't have the waiver as my, as my main, you know, one of my main supports in my life. But if I did need help to the level of, of somebody who would, without any help at all, without family or anybody else helping them, would live in a facility for that care, then I could, um, I could uh, get services through the waiver. And it is a longer process uh, than, you know, I'm sort of breaking it down here for a short, shorter look at it. Um, but again, we're focusing today on eligibility, okay? So two kinds of eligibility, uh, one focused around nursing facility type of needs and the other focusing around intellectual developmental disability type of needs. And so where do we start? <clears throat> we do have a, the Aging and Disability Resource Centers and Developmental Disability Resource Centers. They are available to every and in and or to every Alaskan community. Our centers are there to help answer questions, to help you know what you need, to sort of talk it through. Um, and you can communicate any way, any way that works for you. All right. When I say talk it through, I mean a loved one can help you. Um, a family could could visit and talk about what's needed, and answer some questions about you and your own vision and and hope and things that you have going in your life. Talk about those things and talk about what might be out there to uh, to help. So help you know what you need and what choices are out there. And also, if you need it, help and or guidance to apply for Medicaid, okay? So a person is uh, responsible to apply for Medicaid. You know, if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna have Medicaid and I need help like this through Medicaid, you know, I, I need to apply for Medicaid. So ultimately, you know, you would apply. The person, your family member, your loved one, with having help to do it is okay. Family can help. Um, these uh, centers can help or they can help the helper by answering questions and things like that. Um, but you can definitely call. I thought that my best resource here would be the phone number. And we do have uh, Alaska 211, which is going to help, even if you call 211, and you don't have questions about Medicaid, maybe you have questions about Medicare, maybe you have questions about heating or any kinds of other help that you might need, right? Even if you do have questions about Medicaid and the waivers and things like that, if you call Alaska 211, then they can uh, give you uh, the good place to get the answers you need about help, any kind of help. Okay, so if you have one thing that you remember from this, Alaska 211 could probably help you. And uh, our, our resource centers can help. If, um, if you call one resource center, suppose I call the Aging and Disability Resource Center and my loved one has a developmental disability, they're young, they're a kid, right? Well, that's okay because what they'll do is they will give me the, uh, the Developmental Disability Resource Center closest to me. 
so they can they can answer questions and get you to the right place to get information. Okay, so uh, this is I'll read out the number, the toll free number one eight five 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 six five two zero one seven, right? And for other questions for help in Alaska, you can dial two one one. Okay, so uh, this is the end of my PowerPoint part of the presentation. So we'll go ahead and um, stop our recording if we can.